Hi, I'm Reed Peterson, and welcome to Grief Refuge. Thanks for listening today and trusting Grief Refuge as a resource to help navigate your grief and help you cope with your loss. I'm very sorry that you're experiencing this, but I'm glad you're here. If this is your first time listening, welcome. And if you've listened before, welcome back. Grief Refuge, it's about helping you find peace and purpose after experiencing a death-related loss. This podcast, along with all the other programs, services, and products that Grief Refuge creates, it's all created with the intention to help validate everything that you're going through, to help you take time to reflect, and to help you honor your loved one. So Grief Refuge, we're about helping you learn healthy ways to manage and process grief. Grief Refuge is also a community of comfort, a source of hope, and that sense of peace in regards to your loss, as well as finding a way to embrace life and move forward. Through the stories and the conversations shared on this podcast, my intention is to help you work through the heavier, more painful feelings that go hand in hand with grief. Grief, it's hard. And yes, it's so painful. I'm glad you're here, and I promise to do everything I can to provide the best support to you. Before we begin, I want to mention a couple important points. Because of the depth and the nature of this topic, it's likely that it's more beneficial to not multitask while listening to this podcast. Rather, I invite you to use this time for your personal self-care and to help you reflect. Use this time to settle in, to find some sense of relaxation, and to allow your grief-related feelings to just run their course. Allow yourself the time to use this podcast as a source to help you mourn your loss. Also, I want to mention that Grief Refuge, on average, publishes episodes twice a month. So when you're grieving, that's a lot of time in between each episode, and you may need more resources and more tools to support you in your process. So if you're in the place of needing more support, then download the Grief Refuge app. The Grief Refuge app, it's a source of comfort and support every single day. On the Grief Refuge app, there's daily content. It's like they're in the form of these mini podcasts, and it's something to listen to every day to help validate your grief, to help validate your feelings, to give you perspective, and to help you sort through the thoughts and the feelings that come up with this loss and the grief experience. The Grief Refuge app, it's easy to find and it's easy to download. All you have to do is search Grief Refuge on your phone's app store. So go ahead and download it now to get started. Thank you, and let's move on to today's topic. So today, I'll be sharing some thoughts and some perspective on something that was said to me from a a very kind and caring client. I have a small grief support practice. I call it companioning. It's kind of like counseling, but there really isn't anything to treat. There isn't really anything to cure. It's not a mental health issue. In companioning, it's really about being a mirror and being like a sounding board to someone who's grieving. And that's why I love the work that I do as a grief companion. It's so validating to help someone understand that what they're going through is truly human. And so in one of my conversations with one of my clients, I'm going to call her Jenny. That's not her real name, but to protect her privacy, I'm going to change her name. And Jenny and I have been working together for, I think, about a year now. And we don't meet frequently, but when we connect, I just love the experience because she is in a position of articulating some of the things she feels so deeply. It's almost like it's hard to articulate, but at the same time, she does such a good job. And she feels it, and she names it, 
and I reflect back to her. And there was this point. This was probably at the time of this recording. This is probably several months ago. And Jenny made this comment. It's just kind of passing. She was feeling some strong emotion of her grief. And she said, man, grief really weighs you down. And I said, yes, it does. And so we continued to talk about some of the things that work for Jenny to help her not feel as weighed down. And so that's the inspiration of today's podcast. I'm going to share with you four concepts, four points. I guess they're principles of what you can do when you're in that experience of feeling weighed down by grief. So just a slight caveat, these principles, they're principles. There's things that you can do because your grief, it's unique. Your grief is so specific to your life experience and it's really tied in with your beliefs. It's tied in with your culture. It, it's tied in with like family systems. I mean, there's so much and in, that influences the way you grieve. And so as you listen to this, just remember that these are principles. They're not rigid step-by-step -step processes that you have to do exactly as how they're communicated. The point is, you get it helps you get an idea in your head, and then you customize or cater that idea to your personal experience. Like, for example, if uh, music is recommended as something to listen to, well, the type of music that's listened to is chosen by you. You know, if there's somebody who's providing grief support to you and they say, hey, I want you to listen to X, Y, Z, well, they may not be the best suited for you because they're telling you what to do. And grief support, it's probably more beneficial if you're not told what to do and you're just gently nudged and you're gently guided and more importantly, you're heard, you're seen, and you're witnessed because that's going to help you mourn and that's going to help you feel like life is starting to make sense again. So I got off on a little side tangent there, but I hope that you enjoy the message shared here in these four principles and it helps give you some perspective as far as, you know, just answers or tools or something to do when grief weighs you down. Please enjoy. Have you ever felt like grief has drained your energy? The sadness and the despair, it feels like it's too much to handle and too much to manage. It's like desperation is this understatement. You're at your wit's end and the future looks bleak. This is normal to experience when grieving. Many say that grief shatters you into a thousand pieces, and the process of healing requires you to find what works best for you, to put the pieces together again, and to go on living. But when you're grieving, your brain isn't working the way that you want it to. At times, it works against you. You'll have experiences of confusion, lack of concentration, disorganization, all these experiences, all these processes going on in the brain, these are normal and these are natural responses to grief. Think of it like if you've lost your keys and then where do you find them again? Well, sure enough, they're in the refrigerator. Now, if you've done that before, you're not alone. This is just an example of how grief can impact your thinking and your behaviors. And when you're at this place where you have what's called grief fog, you may not know what to do next. And ironically, more times than not, when somebody tells you that you should do blank, like for example, before, listen to this type of music, well, what, do you, what happens? You try it, you don't like it, and then you think you're doing grief wrong. Or you think that you're trying to like, you're just not healing right. So that ends up being more hurtful than helpful. 
So we've got this dilemma, right? This betwixt and between and unknown. This feeling of being stuck in grief. Hey, I know that this is painful. And I want to tell you that this process has a name. It's called the liminal space. The liminal space, it's this non-physical place where most people hate to be. But grief brings on the liminal space. It's almost like it's forced upon a griever. Think about it. No one ever really asks for a loss, a death. And then no one ever really asks for the, to be in this, this space, this liminal space. Now, what is the liminal space? The liminal space is often this place where a worldview, which is your set of beliefs about how the world functions, and then what place you as an individual occupy therein, this whole worldview, it comes into question. The liminal space weighs people down, especially grieving people, because it's filled with uncertainties. It's filled with unknowns. And there's this struggle for lack of direction and purpose. So does this sound familiar? If it does, I first and foremost want to express my deep compassion and empathy for your situation. I know that it's hard. Being in the liminal space, this is a hard place to be, and this can feel quite painful. So what do we do? We, we want to make the pain go away. And in order to do that, we have to have certain things that are needed to help mitigate this pain. So for the rest of our time today, I'm going to focus on some of these things, some of these principles that can help you get out of the liminal space and help lift the weight of grief from off your shoulders, from off your heart, your chest, your gut, wherever you're feeling it. And remember the caveat. So what will feel good to you and help provide comfort and relief that's going to be slightly different, slightly altered from what other people find that helps them when they're grieving. I own that it's a huge disservice for me to say, hey, do X, Y, and Z, and then your grief is going to be healed. It just doesn't work that way because everybody is so unique and everybody's grief experience is so unique. But... As I said in the introduction, there's general principles that can be followed, which will help make the weight of grief feel much lighter for you and then make your process feel that much more manageable. So the first principle is to create a sanctuary. Everyone needs a safe space to grieve, a space where the good, the bad, and the ugly all these types of emotions can be fully expressed. Having a space to go to and then fully express your emotions, this is what we call a sanctuary. When you have a sanctuary, what you have is trust in the space and that it can hold you during this time of grief and mourning. Now, do you have to start from scratch and build a sanctuary? Absolutely not. A sanctuary can be anywhere. And I'll be honest with you, these days, many people go to their cars and they sit in their cars as a place of sanctuary. As long as you have no distractions, as long as you feel like you're supported, and as long as you feel that the space holds you to be flexible, to grieve in the way that you need, you have a sanctuary and that will help you during this difficult time. So you don't have to create it, you can find it, but try to find and create a sanctuary if you can. 
Many people actually use the Grief Refuge app as their source of sanctuary to help process their emotions of grief. Principle number two is to stay heart-centered. When you're grieving, many of the things that happen around you or the things that people say to you, they can feel hurtful, whether they're intended to be supportive or not. So it's natural to have reactions like feeling defensive, getting angry, and also behaving in ways that would be judged as not being courteous. But these behaviors, they're common. And so I want to say that there's no judgment for having these types of reactions. But my advice or my counsel to you is to do what you can to prevent your heart from hardening up. And what I mean by that is for you to do everything that you can to help refrain from having these defensive and angry reactions as what I would call the go-to response. Because if you do, you're going to create habits. And then habits like these have these consequences of what we call hardening the heart. So staying heart-centered through grief is, yeah, this is hard. And it's an investment of your energy. But I want to tell you about the benefits. Many grievers have told me that they realize that when they limit their defensive reactions from other people or to other people, they actually find themselves not feeling as lonely or they feel more seen and heard by the people who actually show up to support them. Now this is very important when grieving and staying heart-centered is needed to heal and to move forward in life again. So in essence, Staying heart-centered, it's almost like this choice that you have. When some sort of event happens, you know, somebody's talking to you and you kind of find yourself tensing up, you're choppy, you're angry, you bark at them. Well, there's a choice there. Soften your tone and stay heart-centered. Principle number three Spend more time in nature. Hey, if you've wanted to get away and spend more time in nature when you're grieving, that is awesome. And no, you're not alone. Being in nature has so many benefits, so much so that I like to call nature as a saving grace. Simply put, nature heals. We all know that grief can take you to dark places. Being in nature, what it does is it helps to recognize that there's not only just light there, there's also like these seasons and these life cycles that surround you that really has a positive impact on your psyche. Just being in an environment like this, this can help intense emotions settle and soften a bit. It also gives you perspective. It helps you see beyond what's only in front of you and grasps something larger, something grander. Doing so, this can give your mind and heart a much needed break from grief's overwhelming and consuming demands. So can you spend a few more moments in nature today? You don't have to get out of town and go camping. You can walk barefoot on your lawn or at a nearby park. If you have a garden, you can tend the garden for a few more minutes. The point is, you'll find yourself a bit more relaxed when you do this. You'll feel refreshed, and even if it's only just a little bit, you'll feel some endorphins flow. And it's like this appreciation for a well-deserved break from all the sadness and the pain. I'm going to tell you a little secret. When I made the Grief Refuge app, I actually consciously intended to put beautiful images and sounds of nature in pretty much every feature. 
that the grief refuge app has. I just knew nature was so important in people's lives, and I wanted to make sure that I was bringing nature to them. Principle number four, honor your grief. Now, when you think about honoring a loved one, what you're doing is you're essentially doing something to show your love and your respect for them. Did you know that you can do the same to honor your own grief? The word honor means to recognize the value of and to respect. My mentor, Dr. Alan Wolfold, has said, to honor your grief is not self-destructive or harmful. It's courageous and it's life-giving. Honoring your grief, it's probably feeling counterintuitive, mostly because it really isn't something taught in most grief support related programs. It's pretty uncommon because it is uncommon. I have to say, I definitely agree with Dr. Wolfelt that it's a courageous act. There's not a lot of other people doing it. So I can understand that if there's resistance you may feel regarding the need to recognize this value and respect for something that actually feels quite painful. Like I said, it's counterintuitive. But when you honor your grief, you respect it as an important part of your life. I believe that grief shows up as a teacher in times of hopelessness and despair. That's one of the many reasons why grief exists. Honoring your grief can help you find more hope. Honoring your grief, it's paying attention to it as a part of you that has a purpose and a point to it. Honoring your grief is listening to grief itself, it's feeling it, it's expressing it. Instead of dismissing or numbing out the pain, honoring your grief could be this important thing in helping make what feels unbearable actually more bearable. A way to honor your grief is to subscribe to the Grief Refuge app. Using the app, it's a great way to feel supported throughout this difficult time. There's so many things you can do with the Grief Refuge app, all the features, all the messages, all these principles. They're all available to reflect on, to help you understand your grief process, to help you manage your grief process more easily. So those are the four principles. To repeat them real quickly, I recommend creating a sanctuary, staying heart-centered, spending more time in nature, and honoring your grief. If you implement those four principles into your life, your grief process, it's not going to hurt as much. I can't promise you that it's going to like, you're going to get through it super quick. But at the same time, it's just going to feel so much more valuable, so much more meaningful to your life experience. So thanks for listening, and thanks for reflecting on those principles. Also, thanks for listening to the Grief Refuge podcast. I'm very grateful for your trust in Grief Refuge and all the stories and experiences shared on this podcast. Grief and healing is important work, and although painful at times, it's worth it for helping to heal your heart, your mind, and your soul. So as we part ways for today, I ask a favor of you. Would you mind leaving a rating and review on this podcast? I love hearing your feedback. I deeply value it, and I listen to it. I want to make sure that Grief Refuge and this Grief Refuge podcast, it serves your needs. And by leaving a rating and review, it helps us know, and it helps us better provide. So please rate and review the Grief Refuge podcast on this podcast player that you're listening to. Thank you. Take care. Keep honoring your grief. Keep listening to your heart. Be kind to yourself. And talk to you soon.